Houston Real Estate Radio. Welcome back to another edition of Houston Real Estate Radio. Today, um, I wanted, one of the things that I want to talk about um, is some seller strategies. We have a lot of um, properties on the market that are sitting there and not moving, but at the same time, we still have a lack. We we have recently started having a lack of inventory on the market. Our um, Houston MLS is actually showing a reduction in inventory from previous months, um, but there are still some houses that are just sitting there and they're not moving. So I want to talk um, actually with one of our RREA agents, um, Cheryl Hunter. She's a very seasoned agent. She works with a lot of sellers. I want to talk to her about some of those selling strategies, open houses, whether they still work or not. If you've got your house on the market, you definitely want to listen to this next segment. Welcome to the show. Cheryl. Thank you so much, Shannon. So tell me what your thoughts are on pricing strategies. Um, a lot of sellers have expectations that are hard to meet. Um, tell me what you think about pricing strategies. What do you, what are some of the things that you work on with sellers when you go in to list the property? Well, I think the most important thing is you want to be priced competitively. Uh, the, my strategy is to first go in and find out what the seller's needs are. And based on their needs, I know whether or not I can help them. What I find, what I usually tell my seller is that the value of your home is really based on the features, amenities, and condition of the home. However, however, the price is you have to include the needs, uh, the seller's needs, and also uh, look at your competition. Right, because ultimately the market's going to decide how much that property sells for. And we use our best judgment based on the data we get out of the MLS on what we think consumers will pay for the property. And that's not always the same price that the seller wants because they may have put a lot of money in renovations and and different things. So when you have a seller, um, once you've sat down and and picked the price strategy, um, what do you then tell them about um, marketing? I know there's a lot of different companies out there and a lot of different agents, and I think that you'll probably agree with me on this, that marketing is really the most important thing when it comes to selling a house. If you don't market it and get it out there, um, the buyers won't find it. And um, if it doesn't have the showings, you don't get the buyers. So tell me about some of the things that you use for sellers. Well, Shannon, I'm going to have to disagree with you a little (laughs) bit. (laughs) I believe that you have to be price appropriately. I mean, you have to be able to justify your price because selling homes is it's not a science. However, it is about price and exposure. So, of course, marketing is very, very important. But if you're not priced appropriately, I don't care how much you market, you're not going to get your home showed. A lot of sellers are trying to set, set a benchmark. And if they have the time, that's that's probably okay. Uh, I recently had a seller, and we were not out of the realm of justification for his home. Uh, However, we were on the high side of the price, about $5,000. And I I tell you, we must have had 50 showings, and I could not get one offer. And I couldn't get the seller to actually drop the price because he hadn't been in a home for a long time. So... He was just thinking about what I need to bring to the table. I dropped the price $5,000, and I'll tell you, within a week, I had four offers. So when you price, do you want to price high and continue to be on the market? Because there are some consequences. Right, there are. And one thing that I found with agents is if, if you overprice the house, you'll have other agents compare their properties to that house. So I know for some buyer's agents, you know, if there's a, 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 greatly overpriced house in the neighborhood they'll go show it to their buyers and then say you can get the same house over here for x amount of dollars and they're asking the same price for this house you know so i think that pricing is so important um but also marketing and getting out there so that the buyers can find it and you know one of the things we do here at rea is a lot of video um put it on the blog on the website get it out there through social media and help people to be able to see the inside of the property before they even drop drive up to the property and if they do drive up to the property we have interactive yard signs so they can see the video right there at the property as well
well. Um, on the open houses, do you think they still work? Are open houses a thing of the past, or do they still work? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What I found, what I recently found out was that 56% of buyers found open houses to be very useful in their search for a home. That's a lot. So, that's so they do work. Very significant. However, there is a definite difference between a typical open house and a open house strategy. An effective open house. Absolutely. Sure. So tell me some of those differences. Um, how do you make an open house effective? You know, what do you do to get those buyers in there, to find the buyers? It's all about the preparation. I mean, what a strategist would do is they would um, maybe put the yard sign out early in the week, uh, prepare some flyers and market those toward the closest neighbors, and um, maybe invite a broker to p- brokers to participate in an open house. They um, will um, be very knowledgeable about the the neighborhood and. When a buyer walked into that house, they would know exactly what it would take for a buyer to get into that house. I've, yeah, and I find a lot of people now at open houses are giving them a list of other properties in the neighborhood to go and look at. So they, the the consumer, when they come into that open house, are getting something of value. You know, if they're looking for a house in the neighborhood, now they've got a list of them. They can, you know, work from that list. Um, and sometimes I know I've had... Uh, I know we're working together on an open house right now um, later today that we're trying to partner with another another realtor um, to have multiple houses in the neighborhood up for for an open house at the same time. So buyers can, you know, if a buyer comes to one open house, they, they can go to the other one as well. Tell us about the open house you're having later today. Uh, I'm having an open house this weekend in Spring Lakes. In fact, I'm holding one of your uh, listings open. From 3 to 5 p.m., we'll be holding an open house today over in Spring Lakes. And the Spring Lakes neighborhood is off of I-45. It's north. It's right before you get to the woodlands. Great community. Lots of amenities. So if you're looking for a house um, between the... Uh, 250 and 300 price point. It's a great neighborhood to go and check out. Cheryl will be there later this afternoon. And um, before we go to break, there's one other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, Cheryl. And, you know, I told you before, she's a seasoned agent. She's been in this a long time. She's worked with a lot of sellers. And one of the designations that Cheryl has is a CDPE. That's a Certified um, Distressed Property (coughs) Expert. And this designation really means that the agent knows how to work with houses that are in distress, whether they're foreclosures or short sales, and they can help consumers that are in that are having lending issues. Um, You know, if they can't, they're behind on their mortgage payment. um, They're having problems making their payments. They can help them if they need to get out of their mortgage. They can help them sell that house and do a short sale. So, tell us a little bit about that. I know you've done a lot of short sales. I have. I have done a lot of short sales. In fact, right now, Bank of America has a home um, moving incentive uh, where sellers can earn anywhere from $5,000 to $30,000 for initiating a short sale. The seller earns that money. Yes. Just because even though they're behind on their mortgage, they get that money because they're selling it. If you initiate a short sale with Bank of America, before, I believe, September 2013, you may be eligible to get $5,000 to $30,000. Wow, it that's depends, amazing. It, it depends on the type of loan that you have. I had uh, a seller recently where we went to the table, and she walked away with $8,000 uh, from closing for wow. selling her house on a short sale. So she can use that money and go get a new, you know, a new place to live, relocate, and kind of start over fresh on a, yes. on a fresh platform. And I know there are a lot of families that really need that because they've lost jobs, they've had financial crisis going on, and, you know, and they need that. So I, I 
there are a lot of programs out there for short sales. If you are in a situation where you think you might need to do a short sale or you might be headed for foreclosure, I definitely recommend that you get with an agent that it, that is a CDPE expert because they really know what to do. Um, they can help you. They can help you um, with your needs to find what you need. You're probably going to need a good accountant, might need an attorney, but first and foremost, you need a realtor who can get the property uh, up for sale get it marketed, get it sold uh, for you. So definitely um, want people out there to know that if you know someone who's having some financial problems, make sure that they know about that because sometimes the realtors are the last people to find out about it. And at that point, it's too close to a foreclosure. We can't help them. So I think the best thing to know about short sales is that you have to start the process early. Right. Absolutely. Well, we're running out of time and uh, but we'll come right back in just a few minutes to talk more here on Houston Real Estate Radio.